romanticize them, you romanticized violence. Now please come out and kill and condemn the killing of these 76 CRPF. But if you were to ask what was 76 CRPF doing in a tribal village with 21 AK-47s, 38 INSAS rifles, 7 SLRs, 6 light machine guns, 1 Sten gun and 1 2-inch mortar. What were they doing? Who were they there to kill? If, it is, if your answer is that they were there because there's a war, and that they were there because the Maoists are armed and there's a conflict, then by forcing you to unanimously condemn that killing, you're forcing somebody to unanimously say, okay, I support you, I'm on the government side of this war. But it's not so simple. It's a very thorny, naughty issue. It's not so simple. It's not possible for me to go to that place to look at those people who are on, I mean, starving. They only have loincloths and bows and arrows. You want to snatch away that too. And I have to also come down on your side. I'm sorry, I can't. I just simply cannot do it. I, I feel a bit embarrassed when, when, when uh, we talk about we are against a war on our own people. Because, as Gotham says, ever since India became an independent sovereign country, it has behaved like a colonial power. From the moment it won independence, it has been at war. Nagaland, Manipur, Hyderabad, Goa, Assam, Punjab, Kashmir, uh, the Naxalite uh, movement in West Bengal, Telangana, just look at it. I mean, they blame the, the Maoists for believing in protracted war. But here is a state that believes in protracted war that has killed 68,000 people, or ha that war has killed 68,000 people in Kashmir alone. There's no body count in the Northeast. We have laws like the Armed Forces Special Powers Act that allows non-commissioned officers to kill on site, and we call ourselves a democracy. And now we have those laws extended, of course, to this area. And, and there is something quite interesting. If you stare at that list, if you stare very hard at that list of, of wars that have been uh, prosecuted by the Indian state. War against Nagas, against Manipuris, against who are tribal people, war against the Goans, who are mostly Christians, war against Sikhs, against, thank you, against every kind of minority. Huh? Against tribals, against every kind of minority. It's an upper caste Hindu state making war against every kind of other. I mean, I wish I could uh, show you this picture since we are all talking about bloodthirsty Maoists and their violence. You can't see it, but that's a picture of a chief minister who you all know, whose name begins with N and whose surname begins with M. <laughs> And he's, he's doing puja to AK-47 and to SLRs. And it says, arms and the man. Gujarat CM worships the weapons, worships weapons at his residence in Gandhinagar. Okay. So, uh, none of us worship weapons, at least I don't. But, but the point is, what is going on in this country? I mean, I'm not, I'm not somebody who believes that the only people that are resisting this is this pristine and beautiful revolutionary force called the Maoists. I'm not one of those. There is, as I said, a bandwidth of resistance movements, and that is what gives this resistance in our country such a depth and such a beauty. As I've said, it's not, it's not a new war. I, I really want to read a poem to you, if, if, if you wouldn't mind. Could I? 
Okay, I will read a poem to you. But I want to say this, that the war that's being waged is not a new war. But if we win, it will be a new victory. And we can win because I don't think there's an example of any country anywhere in the history of this kind of fighting where the poorest people in the world, the poorest, most malnutritioned people in the world are waging a resistance against the richest corporations in the world supported by the security forces, by the corporate media, by the judiciary of the biggest democracy or so-called democracy in the world. Okay, and they're winning. They have stopped these corporations in their tracks so far. And if we join them, we can make it stop. I really believe that we can make history if we want to. It can happen because there is a depth of understanding. There's a depth of understanding. You see this insurrection that's going on. It's asking some very, very serious questions. Not just about, you know, justice and so on. It's asking you the, que it's, it's questioning the meaning of democracy and it's questioning the meaning of civilization itself. What does that mean? being civilized. What does civilization mean? And it's not, I mean, it's not that these questions have not been asked before. Of course, they have been, you know, they have been. But they've been asked in universities. They've been asked in seminars. They've been asked in art galleries. But here you have a situation where hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people are putting their bodies on the line to ask this question. And it's a very, very profound question. And it's a question that ho the answer to that question is the key to what is going to become, not of the Congress government, not of the BJP, not of the Maoists, I really don't care, of this planet, of this civilization, of hu the human race. I don't even care only about the human race, of all those birds on the Gulf of Mexico with oil slick in their feathers, all of that, these people are fighting a war that is questioning all of that. And that is the beauty of this resistance. You know, I, I actually don't, I actually think that the, I'm not even, I'm, I'm even bored of asking questions of the state. Because I don't expect any answers from the state. I don't. I think it's much more interesting to interrogate the resistance to which we belong. I'm on this side of the line. I'm very clear about that. I don't care. Pick me up. Put me in jail. I'm on this side of the line. But on this side of the line, turn around and ask your comrades questions for our sake, for the sake of the struggle, for the sake of pushing things forward. But um, years ago, I was, in, uh, I, was at a, I was at a meeting of iron ore workers in Rajnandgaon in Chhattisgarh many years ago when, when Manmohan Singh, who had, been, who had been the finance minister, had had done all the reforms and then lost the elections to the BJP. So he was in the opposition. He was nobody. So uh, a Hindi poet at that meeting read a poem called Manmohan Singh Kya Kar Raha Hai Aaj Kal. And the, line, and the first two lines were Manmohan Singh Kya Kar Raha Hai Aaj Kal. Vish Kya Karta Hai Khoon Mein Utarne Ke Baad. You know, like you've done it. You've dismantled everything. You've opened the markets. You've done all that. Now you don't have to do anything more. No? You can just travel through the bloodstream. You can just destroy our lives. You can just destroy our villages. You can just destroy our jobs by sitting there. And that's what actually happened in, in 1989 when capitalism won its jihad against communism in the bleak mountains of Afghanistan. The whole world did a somersault, including our country, which was non-aligned, which was a proud 
which had some kind of pride. 